Are okay. you recording right now? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> you better add the show, dude. Okay, it's the yeah, dude. Okay, okay so let's talk about Back to the Future then. Alright, so. Intro, intro, we'll cut, edit everything just from here. Okay, we start from here. Introduce. Okay. Introduce, man. Introduce! Okay, I'll introduce. Okay, for this point on. Yo, guys, welcome back. This is Jeff, and I'm here with Song again. We're going to discuss the movie Back to the Future, okay? Because I recently just rewatched the three movies. Woohoo! And I, we just want to talk about it and give our little thoughts. Alright, man. Alright, Back to the Future. Let's go with one, because that comes first. Let's start with one. My favorite. My Your favorite personal. Film? Personal favorite, man. It uh, is uh, one of the best films I've ever watched. Oh, man. Really? Yeah, I just like two a little bit more, but okay, we'll stick with one. Okay, we'll stick with one. Okay, so you got Marty and you got Doc, who just invented a time machine out of a DeLorean, man. I mean, come on. First, first of all, that's where you initiate your idea. That's that foundation. Number one's the foundation, dude. I mean, you got yeah, everything going in number one. You go back in time into 1955, everything's like culturally different for Marty. Marty's like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? His dad's creepy. His dad's a nerd, a creep. His mom was hot. Damn, dude. But no, no. In real life, I wouldn't hit that. That's disgusting. I don't want to be an Oedipus. Okay. <laughs> that, yeah, dude, that was disgusting. His mom got a hot freaking hard on for him, man. Yeah, crazy. especially like, during the scenes. Like, his mom just came off like a slut, basically. She yeah. did, man. Like, Complete opposite of what happened in the beginning of the story. She was like a nun, basically. Yeah, she, she was basically saying how girls never go after guys and stuff like that, and then she basically came straight after him. Yeah, was exactly. Like, oh. It was like complete opposite behavior that altered, altered, altered into the parallel universe, man. That, you see, that that's why number one's the best thing. It has like every element of like good science fiction, okay. and you got good storytelling. Okay, but speaking of when you said altered into alternate. Okay, because in the second movie is when they start talking about the paradox. Right. But in the first movie, they were actually creating a lot of paradoxes. Right yeah. Because they're already in a separate timeline. No, like, Doc says it's a par it's a paradox just because he doesn't like that future. All right. Okay. It's for some people, like Biff's friends, that's like the best future they can have, dude. For Biff, that is like the ultimate best future. What do you mean, in the original one? Well, you know, in the second one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that, that's when he became rich. That yeah. was the, okay. That was the best future. Yeah. So you see, like you. He says paradox, but it's technically a parallel universe. I mean, you can't call it a paradox. A paradox, uh, okay, I so honestly don't think how you, you can call it a paradox. Like, just, a paradox basically was something that contradicts us, like something yeah. that messes itself up, right? Like, yeah, something that happens, but it still contradicts itself like, like, constantly. Yeah. Like, like I go back in time and I kill Doc, and that's be a paradox because then that means Doc will never get the chance to make the time machine. Yeah. And then I, therefore, I can never go back in time to kill Doc. And therefore, you have no relationship that builds up to what you have right, what you are right now. So that, yeah, that creates. That, a that's a paradox. But what they're using the movie basically, paradox means anytime the good guys don't have favor on their side. Yeah. Because when the bad guys are getting ahead, that was a paradox. Yeah. Them. So I mean, really, who's the bad guy and who's the good guy? I mean, I honestly think in the second one, you clearly see that Doc and Marty are sort of the villains there, man. Really. Well, Think that? about it. I mean, Biff has okay. Just because no, what I don't get. Okay, here's. Let me just start off like really quick. Okay, just start playing. Let me start. Off, okay, um, twenty. They go to twenty fifteen, right? Okay, yeah. All right, and first of all, why do they need to go to the future? Yeah, actually, kind of Doc. I just went back in time and told Marty to watch his kids. Yeah, but what the hell's the point of that? I mean, if he the Good. present the present actions can constantly change the future, right? So technically, yeah, that, that's true. So there's no point in going to the future. That's just sort of stupid. So yeah, because technically they went to the future to change something that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. And then going back to the past, that technically doesn't change the future. It changes the future for that certain universe. Universe, but it doesn't change the one. For but once you go back to your present day, you're going to create another parallel universe, and that universe isn't going to even matter, man. So the beginning of Back to the Future Two was useless, and the directors and, and the producers were yeah. just basically trying to find a way to introduce. The future to no, the world. producers and directors aside, what that does, what those idiots like Doc and Marty did, they they themselves created a bad timeline because they did something stupid like going to the future and trying to change something that doesn't matter at all. They got the almanac. Okay, they yeah. fuck up the whole history. Well, fuck up as in, you know, they don't want it. Uh -huh. So, I mean, people are just... But, but, technically, could, could, but technically, they created a, fa a favorable reality to them because in the end of the movie, it's because they went into the future that Marty didn't crash the car. Mm, that's true, but still. Uh, so, so technically, as you're saying, they're kind of like the villains. They kind, of, kind of are the bad guys. They're achieving life with the technology to go into the future to see what's exactly. happening, and then change their own reality. It was the same thing in the first movie, which I kind of I love the I love the movie. I love Back to the Future series. It was my favorite series. But the problem was, I kind of felt like he was cheating life because. 
Okay, let's just start with Universe A. That was the original one, how the movie started off. But at the end of the movie, they were in like Universe B, which was favorable to Marty. Yeah. Because they changed everything. He, he had the opportunity to go back in time, and he ended up changing everything, so he screwed up Biff's life, because Biff was having, having a better life. Yeah. Even though he was a bully and stuff, but he, they basically fucked him over, and then gave his dad, you know, a new life and everything, so his life became better. Yeah. So, I mean, really, it boils down to what, is, what constitutes a hero in a movie? Someone who just reaps all the benefit from one person so that their whole family is better off? I think that's sort of a villain, dude. I mean, really. Okay, a hero is someone who dies for the better good. Like, okay, just another random movie, Watchmen, Rorschach. Okay. He's a hero, dude. I mean, he stood, he stood by his will. He had the will. He stood by his ideas, and he died to the end. Like that, that's a hero. That's a hero. Let's begin another movie, let's let's backtrack again. Lion King, Mufasa. That's that guy, right. he, he's a real hero. Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 You can't say Mufasa's not a hero. He's not a hero. Dude. Mufasa's not a hero? No, Mufasa's not he a hero. He saved his son. No. No, 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 no. Darth Vader's a hero. He saved his son too. Darth Vader killed children in the name <laughs> of the Galactic Empire. And Mufasa, he fucked up his brother and sent him to the hyenas. Who wouldn't be pissed? It's like, it's like saying this, okay, another movie, Thor and Loki, alright? In, okay. in the 2011 edition, you have Odin, who adopts or who takes the baby uh, Loki okay. from the Frost Giants. And he's adopted, and they grow up together with, like, Loki grows up together with Thor, and he becomes insanely jealous by the end. And that's what, that's what happens with Mufasa too, man. Mufasa just takes his brother out of the picture from the great sunlight kingdom, and puts them with the puts them with the hyenas, and he's pissed. He has that scar to prove his pissed off. <laughs> and he's pissed off, dude. So when he kills Mufasa, it's somewhat justified, dude. That built up of you know rage and anger and jealousy. It's I honestly think it's justified. Mufasa's a fucking villain. I can, I can kind of agree with that because he Mufasa was probably one of the most precious that Walt Disney made him. So you can't really yeah, say that. Disney exactly. seriously, man, Disney. Disney and their their idea of a hero. They heroes fuck people over in all of these movies. People fuck. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay, so we're speaking of uh, what we were talking about before, Loki and Thor. Yeah. Okay, that's most re more recent, and I get, I think the viewers can actually relate to that because they, they just watch, probably watched it this year or heard about Thor. Yeah. Okay, but speaking of Loki and uh, yeah, so like, so you're basically saying that Loki was more Loki wasn't really jealous of Thor in the beginning of the movie, right? Yeah. It was because of the actions of Thor. Yeah, no, it's Loki because of the hero. it's because of the divine right of Thor that he got pissed off. I mean, the firstborn is gonna be king, obviously, but it's Odin's fault. I mean, Thor was just like he wasn't in the know, dude. Thor was just like I'm doing my thing, I'm doing how I was raised stuff, but Odin's like, oh, well, he's adopted. So I'm always going to treat my son first, you know, first best. Do you know what the irony of that is? What? Marvel's won by Disney. Wow. <laughs> Pressing. That, that's, yeah. that's, why, that's why Disney likes Marvel. I, I did Marvel. not know that until now. But think of all the Marvel superheroes. They're actually, a lot of Marvel heroes aren't really heroes if you think about it to yeah. like a deeper level. Like characters like Wolverine, it's like, you know, they're anti-heroes. They're not really true heroes. Anti-heroes, I honestly think anti-heroes are heroes. You really think that? Well, I don't know. I, 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 may, I mean, I don't know. If people watch this, I mean, if people watch this and um, they go back a little bit and see my argument, I may be a little contradicting. And but you know, that's, that's how human beings are. We contradict ourselves, but sometimes. But um, I'm just saying, Wolverine is a hero. I mean, when it gets down to it. Okay, yeah, I guess he still does what's for me. I mean, it's because he has all these regenerative powers that he's able to do all that shit, and people see him as an antihero. But his actions, without his superpowers, he'd be considered a hero. Okay. He saves all those children. Okay, origins. He saves all those children. Okay, just need to go relate to children, right? We save yeah. children to hero. We save children, <laughs> you're, you're a hero. Or, okay, number one, he stabs Rogue and just to save everybody in the UN summit. He's a hero, dude. I mean, he saves people who are gonna, like, in the whole X-Men series, mutants are like underlings. I mean, they're the underlings of society. No one gives a shit about them. But in the U, like people in the UN, they make decisions globally that's going to affect everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. So Wolverine's willing to, you know, almost die from Rogue's, you know, suck, like leech sucking powers, okay. and he's willing to make that sacrifice. So you, it just shows even in someone like you know how society considers an antihero, they're actually heroes, no, dude. He's willing to sacrifice himself for society. He's yeah. good. Don't yeah, yeah. people see that masochistic sense of life, like sort of an antihero thing. 
and I don't think that's appropriate. I mean, anti-heroes are always the ones who are gonna who have nothing to lose, and they're just gonna do everything they can for whatever they want to do. So okay, I don't know. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. That's uh, okay, but once again, owned by Disney now. It's actually funny how Disney is actually not using Marvel to like the fullest power because technically Disney could be pushing Marvel a lot just because. You know, at Marvel, after Marvel being sold to Disney because the economy was bad, yeah. Disney has a lot of money, a lot of resources to be making. I don't know why is that the reason they're pushing out all these Marvel movies lately, yeah. for, to push for the Avengers. But, you know, I, I personally would actually like to see more Marvel, you know, related attractions or, you know, other stuff going on. Because, you know, Disney, Disney does a lot of weird things, but... I don't know. Well, maybe we'll see that. Maybe on Cal California and... Disneyland, we'll see, you know, uh, Wolver Wolverine's Adamantium Ride, uh, Berserker's <laughs> Fury, and, or I don't know, Spider-Man's Web Sling, or Blade's Blade, or I don't know. Oh, okay. speaking of Spider-Man, actually, what do you think of the reboot? Because I'm not uh, happy with that. I, 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 I hate when they reboot. I'm sure too. there are plenty of videos out about complaints, and my biggest complaint is that Andrew Garfield isn't in one with Peter Parker at all. Okay. He doesn't. I mean, Tobey Maguire, as shitty as the third one was, I mean, Tobey Maguire was one of the best. He was Spider-Man. He was Spider-Man. He was Peter Parker. For, he engraved Peter Parker to us. Yeah. It's like Daniel Radcliffe will always be Harry Potter. Exactly. Fuck Harry Potter, though. <laughs> Seriously, fuck Harry Potter. I don't care what people don't watch this, if people do watch this, fuck Harry Potter. Okay, you know Harry Potter. No. Okay, but um... Fuck Twilight. I'm sorry, like, let, I'm, let's just go on, right? Break, breaking Dawn's coming out. What? Breaking Dawn's coming yeah, out. Yeah, fuck Twilight. Fuck <laughs> Harry Potter. Alright, people grew up with I grew up with Harry Potter, but fuck Harry Potter, man. Right, fuck him. Yeah, because well, technically we, we, we were on the outer layers of Harry Potter. We we, we, we almost missed it. Yeah. Like as kids, like we, 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 we still grew up with the. Uh, okay, what did we actually grow up with? Because you know I'm 22. We we grew up when we were kids. We I grew up with Power Rangers. Yeah, we had Power Rangers. Yeah. Whatever happened to good things like Power? Rangers? Disney owns that too now. Oh God. Disney owns everything. Did, did no, the problem is like they keep it so generic. Like they set a formula, and each Ranger generation they keep the same thing. You got. Shitty budget, first of all. You got shitty budget. And yeah, shitty budget. You got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else? You got shitty budget, you got shitty acting, you got shitty martial art. Not really shitty martial art, I'm sure they some of them do their own stunts. Most likely not. <laughs> Terrible storyline. Okay. Everything's the same. There's an evil person there, and there are five rainbow bastards and they're gonna go kill them. That's basically the story. I mean, there's no no new take. I mean, they're going with the stability thing. It's crazy. Okay, answer, answer me this one. Do you think Power Rangers are actually heroes? Because if you think about it, Power Rangers should cause more damage than they actually say. Collateral damage, exactly. Heroes cause collateral damage. But you know, when they go into the mech robots in the city and they fight like whatever, like, 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 like let's go with season one because I actually like that. Lord Zed or Rita says. Yeah. You know, they're like destroying buildings and crap and they're knocking them into like skyscrapers. Exactly. And like, I mean, as fake as those buildings are in the whole <laughs> shooting, if that was reality, you, you wouldn't want the Power Rangers to save your ass. Are you kidding me? They're destroying like mil billions, billions of dollars of buildings. Yeah, exactly. It's fucking nuts. I mean, I don't know why people cheer for Power Rangers. I used to, but now, I mean, with deeper insight, you think, damn, these guys are assholes. Why don't they just go into like the plain, like really plain place, like Grand Canyon or the fucking desert? Why in a metropolitan city they have to do they have to fight? Yeah. Oh, okay, but you remember the first one, the, the second season around Lord's Head? Yeah. Remember the, what's it called? What, what, what was the mummy guys called? Like the, the, the minions that he had? They were, uh. Mm, can't like, you know, because they had the little Z on their chest, and when you punch them, they explode, right? Mm. You remember that? I don't remember that. Okay, but anyways, I was thinking, how come, like, regular people just can't fight those guys? Because technically, like, if you, like, every time they hit them in the chest with the little Z, they just, like, spontaneously. You know, yeah, you know what? Power Ranger, the whole universe of Power Ranger, like, just baffles me because nobody has guns. Well, they have laser guns. They have laser guns, but nobody has regular guns. I mean, the police don't even use guns. I'm sure people can wrong me right there, but they don't have guns, dude. I mean, if you have guns, you can shoot those bastards down. I mean, it's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. They shot those shooting at Godzilla. Yeah, I know, dude. Like, if they had the technology, if people researched so that Rita and those other bastards don't try to destroy the city, you know, scientists will try to come up with something. What? Okay, nukes. Why don't they just nuke the fucking moon where they're like located at? Okay. Oh, well, speaking of cops, have you noticed there are only like two cops in the whole entire Power Rangers? Yeah, series? seriously. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> the same guys. Like it was like Balkan Skull when they like 